Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Thanks for joining us again here at the Farm and Home Show. My name is Kristen Hildebrand, and we are back in the studio with Dr. Rachel Rudolph. She's our Extension Vegetable Specialist with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. Glad to have you back with us, Rachel. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yes. Now, yesterday you started talking to us about abiotic yep. issues yep. with tomatoes. Right. So again, just to recap for those of us who didn't, for those who didn't see us the other day, um, abiotics. Uh, abiotic disorders, not contagious diseases. That's different from biotic diseases or disorders that people would see. So not caused by a virus or bacteria or fungi. Mm -hmm. Usually caused by a nutrient deficiency, um, nutrient toxicity maybe, um, environmental causes, kind of wet weather or really hot temperatures, that kind of thing, or um, genetics. So kind of something that maybe you you planted this this particular crop, this particular tomato, you like the way it tastes, but it's kind of prone to certain things. Right, right. Now, I know you mentioned blossom and rot yesterday, and we learned um, a little bit more about some of the other ones, but what about for like zippering? Zippering, so again, one of those tough ones, nobody likes to hear that there's not much you can do about it, right? <laughs> That's right. There's not much, Kristen can't rush over and fix your zippering problem, mm -hmm. but, um, it is a brown tissue on the side of a tomato skin. It, it looks bad, right? Um, it looks like a zipper, right? Like, like a like a regular zipper. Like a regular zipper. That's why they call it that. And zippering is the result of the flower anther remaining attached when the the fruit starts to develop. And so, it's usually associated with um, you know kind of cooler temps sometimes. Um, and it's again a varietal issue, so mm -hmm. different varieties react differently to it. And so when you're looking for seed type, um, just kind of make sure, scan through and say, you know, okay, this one, the seed company will tell you, you know, this one's not prone to that or this one's resistant to certain things, just like with diseases. So it's really important to look at which cultivar that, or tomato yes. variety that you're using. Right, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, everyone has their favorites and sometimes those, you know, it's hard to change. And, right. But, so it's a kind of a yeah. plus and minus of, you know, the heirloom types are taste really good. Mm -hmm. The hybrids have benefits that, you know, the other ones don't. Plus and minus, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, talk to us a little bit, uh, too, about yellow shoulder. Yellow shoulder. So that one's a little bit more complicated. Um, so yellow shoulder, just as it sounds, it's on the top of the tomato, it uh, around the stem end, and onto the shoulders of the tomato as it starts to round. It'll look yellow or kind of a pale orange. Mm -hmm. And it's still, we're still kind of figuring out exactly what causes that. But generally it's thought that it's caused by lack of potassium um, and too much magnesium. So uh, if growers really like to put Epsom salts down, you've probably heard about that. It yes. makes the tomatoes taste better. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot of magnesium. And so when there's a lot of magnesium, the plant won't take up as much calcium or potassium. And so you get this imbalance. So again, you might have a lot, plenty of potassium in your soil mm -hmm. and the plant's preferentially choosing to pick up something else. Gotcha. So. And so the soil test, the initial soil, soil test. test. Soil test, soil test, soil test. Yes. Yeah. We can actually take that in and uh -huh. actually look at it right. and see it a little bit better. So it'll say, you know, you'll put tomato as the crop and you'll get those results back and it'll have a hearts ratio and you'll know your your potassium to magnesium ratio and that's going to be really indicative of you know a, po a potential risk for yellow shoulder mm -hmm. and that yellow shoulder looks as if the tomato's not ripe yet yeah and then it just never gets ripe mm -hmm. it's just it's a permanent yellow mark on that tomato so it's unmarketable for those commercial growers. Yeah, yeah. And do you all see yellow shoulder pretty often? Yes, um, in high tunnels it's more common um, just because people put fertilizers down and because it's a covered structure, things don't leach, you know, so whatever you put down, whatever fertilizer you put down kind of stays there. So mm -hmm. I think nutrient imbalances are more common gotcha. in high tunnels. Gotcha. Yep. Now, uh, what was the last one you cracking? Cracking. So cracking is one of those that you see more often in the field because it's caused by inconsistent moisture. So you'll have a dry period followed by a really wet period. So the tomato's kind of stressed out a little bit, drought stressed, and then it takes up all this water at once. And so the fruit expands, 
the skin isn't quite ready for that, and so you get those cracks. Mm -hmm, that form. Um, right, and so that obviously happens more in the field where you can't control the weather. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, you have a great guide here. Mm -hmm. If anybody's interested, they can certainly pick it up yep. at the Extension Office. At the office. Extension Office. So, Rachel, we appreciate you coming in and joining us. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed the show. If you have any questions, give your local Extension Office a call. Have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.